assalamu alaikum and good morning ladies and gentlemen our distinguished guest speaker and our group members i am safia khan am phil chemistry graduate benazir university peshawar i welcome you all to this course entitled nano science and nano technology i welcome you all to this amazing course before starting and introducing i would like to invite mr abdullah for the recitation of few verses of the holy quran a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim الحمد لله الذي انزل على عبد الهدى الحمد لله الذي انزل على عبد الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر باسا شديدا من لدن هو يبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات ان لهم اجرا حسنا ما كثين فيه ابدا وينذر الذين قالوا اتخذ الله ولدا ما لهم به من علم ولا لآبائهم قبرت كلمة تخرج من أفهائهم إن يقولون إلا كذبا فلعلك باح نفسك لا سارهم إلا ملوا بهذا الحديث أسفا فرض الله العظيم Jazakallah it is a great honor and pleasure for all of us that once again review articles and original research articles our main objective is to provide you with a remarkable opportunity to showcase your talent globally welcome to the mastering the art of nano science and nano technology online course we are excited to have you join us on this transformative learning journey In this comprehensive course we will dive deep into nano science and nano technology and equip you with the knowledge and skill to excel in this field whether you are beginner or have some prior experience this course is designed to meet your needs and make you to the next level this course will be instructed by honorable dr noor fati atia dr noor atia is currently assistant professor at chemistry division national institute of standards Dr Noor has more than 75 publications with a high impact factor. He has published 6 international patents. His highest index is 29. He has been awarded several national and international prizes such as state prize, NIS prize and Obeda prize. Let's overview the course. Introduction to the nano science and nano technology, fundamentals of nano science and nano technology. synthesis and preparation of nano materials nano science and nano technology in material sciences in biological sciences in electronics in medicines in energy environmental applications of the nano science and nano technology social and ethical implications of nano science and nano technology so without any further delay i would like to invite honorable dr noor atia to start the course properly welcome sir Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your nice introductions, and uh, uh, it's my pleasure to be with all of you uh, for four days uh, regarding the giving some overview and uh, simple introductions about nanomaterials, nanotechnology, and uh, what's the classifications of nanomaterials and why we are using. why we are preparing this kind of materials and also the application of this material sciences characterizations elucidation techniques as essential elucidation techniques and some of the applications i had told before in previous slides uh, in previous lectures uh, in order to do anything you have to dedicate it your research dedicate it your innovations to solve some of the problems of the of the crises around us which threaten the life of the people so we have a five big crises we have a energy crises we have a health crises environmental pollution crises water crises or food crises and all of our research should be dedicated 
to the such kind of solutions of anyone doing something else is not directly correct. So that's why the people just walking, uh, uh, collecting some some smart materials, which is called nanomaterials. Actually, nanomaterials is exist maybe one million years back, but at that times there's no techniques. Did you see my slide number four right now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Actually, nanomaterials or nanoscale of materials, nanoscale materials, you can see nanomaterial, nanoscale material, because nanotechnology or nanoscience is umbrella of uh, using the nanomaterials or the material in nanoscale. It would exist a long time ago, I mean, it's back. Uh, anyway, then uh, at that time, the people start to think about how to prepare some different materials and how to engineer that kind of nanomaterial based on the need, because uh, the material which discovered or you can just see by the niches or by the tools maybe is not fit for some other applica uh, applications so the people start to think about the nanomaterial and they start to see and there are many uh, uh, there's a many people start to uh, classify and start to define the nanomaterials so there's all the definitions and the past book has been published regarding the nanoscience or nanoscale material have defined the nanomaterial is the any material have in its one of its dimensions in the range of one to 100 nanometers this could be the nanomaterials but for my view this is all definitions this is not correct because any materials maybe range 150 120 and till 200 it's still nanoscale materials but more than this you cannot say nanomaterial. I think more than 250, you should not be, should be sub microscale. But at till 250, it could be nanomaterial actually. But 100 is, so you know, some person had prepared some material 150, 170, it's still nanomaterial actually. So that's why I think that this is all definitions is very old, maybe th more than 30 years old. So it's not correct right now. And the people start. To think uh, about the thinsis procedure or the main route of senses. So they discovered there's a two main route of senses, and under this senses routes, there's a many sub methods for the senses. So there's a bottom up techniques and top down techniques. What the meaning of bottom up and top down? Bottom up techniques we start to prepare the nanomaterials from the scales which is less than nan nano like we start from ions like for example silver nanoparticles we start from silver ions from gold ion from platinum ion all the nanomaterials we start from the ions we start from the molecules for some polymer we start from the monomer for some polymer also so this means you start to form uh, 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 the main precursors of the material which is less than 100 uh, less than one nano, I mean, I, mean, I mean, like for example, graphene. Graphene you can prepare it by two ways. The first way is from by chemical vapor depositions from the uh, molecules like methane, or you can prepare from top down techniques from graphite. Okay, so uh, this is the, 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 the one way of the synthesis procedure, the other since is top down. Top-down techniques means you start from the micro scale, like lithography, uh, ball milling. There are the many physical and chemical methods. Also, it's used for top-down techniques. In this case, you start from the micro scale material or micro scale material until reach to nano scale material. Like nanocellulose, the people start from micro cellulose or micro cellulose. They make extractions to the nano cellulose, right? So uh, there are the many, 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 many procedures. Uh, ball milling, for example, graphene, for example, many, many procedures uh, uh, that we will use top-down techniques. We will uh, continue during the course uh, or during the training about the, the methods which is listed in top-down and the methods which listed in bottom-up. Okay. Uh, Now, now you see my slide, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So now I will just start with the classification of nanomaterials. 
Okay, the people start to think about the nanomaterial and they define the nanomaterial initially. And they uh, and once they discover the nanomaterial, they measure all the characteristics and they found it's very interesting materials and it's much one sometimes 100 better in property than the macro scale. For example, in thermal uh, conductivity or thermal stability or mechanical properties, is sometimes 1,000 better more than the macro scale material. Then the people will start to classify based on the dimension. So there is a different classifications of nanomaterials, and I will go th through it. The first classification is based on the dimension or based in the shape. So based on the dimension, the people say when we have one materials have nanoscale from all the directions or from all the dimensions, we call view dimension nanomaterial, like nanoparticle, quantum dot, and so on. And the other things, when we have only the the, the, thick, the, the, the thickness of the, uh, uh, of the of the material in nanoscale, but the lens in macro scale, we call one dimension, like nanotube, nanofiber, nanowire, and there's a big difference between nanotube and nanofiber and nanowire. And when we have the material, the thickness and the width in nanoscale, then it's called 2D nanomaterial. There's a big difference between 2D material and 2D nanomaterial. We are talking about 2D nanomaterial right now because 2D material means the material is growth in two dimensions, okay? Like here, graphene, nanofilm, nanocoating, nanolayer, and so on. Then the last, classification is 3D, like nanoflower, nanopillar, nanocoils, and we'll go through in details. Okay. Uh, you see my slide right now? Yes, sir. Good. Zero dimension nanomaterials is called nanoparticles, the most common type of nanomaterial with dimension within nanoscale. The dimension of one uh, uh, nanoparticle is larger, uh, not, not should be not more than 100. But I, I, this is you know the old definition. But if you have nanoparticle like 150, 160, 200, it still is nano uh, scale material and based on the application. Sometimes if I prepare. One, yeah, I, I I agree. Most of the applications they like the material to be smaller than 50 or smaller than 100, but it depends on some other applications. Some other application, even spherical nanoparticle, is not working well, and you need some some specific dimension of the material or specific shapes. So uh, 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 this, you know, uh, you can see the slides. I, I have shown some big different both of the materials even organic nanoparticles or, or, or inorganics of conducting polymer or, or some water stable polymer uh, and the shape of the uh, the spherical shape it's a spherical shape because there's a there's a big issue actually when you prepare some nanomaterial you the, most of the people care much about the size but there is a very important issue the distribution the the distribution means we have an outside distribution. We have a good side distribution. What the difference between both? There's a big difference. And also it's, it's significantly affect in the applications. Because when we have an outside distribution means most of the particle size have similar size or the size is similar, like 20, 25, 22, 23, 18, 19, I mean, plus or minus five, you can say, okay? But the both size distribution, you have 100 nanometers and then you have 10, uh, 10 nanometers, you have uh, 50 nanometers, you have 150 nanometers, that means you have a different size of nanoparticle. And this case is not good. Even it's not good in the applications. Even when you measure the DLS, a dynamic light scattering, one of the techniques which characterize the material, you have to be much careful when you see the graph because intensity and the volume is not working well. You have to use, you have to use number size distributions. Because in this case, you can see, because sometimes you are, prepared, whenever anybody prepare anything, it will not be 100%. If you're just going to prepare some nanomaterial with a reported method and everything is fine, everything is okay, the yield will not be 100. The yield may be 20, more than 50, or 
في 60 something and the other it will be macro scale or the other will be bigger uh, size so you have to be careful in that for classification of this of this issue and you have to optimize your way to get the most of the size uh, of the particle in similar size this is very important for the application actually okay this is example. Uh, you see my slide number seven right, right now. So, did you see? Yes, sir. So this is we you just see the the, the organic nanoparticles uh, uh, like polymer nanoparticle, polyvinyl pyridine, nanoparticle, and uh, polyvinyl nanoparticle. Now we are going to zero dimension, but inorganic nanomaterials like silver nanoparticles, which is a very 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 famous, and titanium dioxide nanoparticles or nickel oxide nanoparticles, which we called magnetic nanoparticles it's also <coughs> other different size so if you look to the nickel oxide uh, nanoparticles you see most of the particle size is similar so we say it's now size distribution and if you look to titanium dioxide nanoparticles also most of the size similar size but this is aggregated so in order to use you have to make individualizations it's very very important most of many people working in nanoscale material or nanomaterial they're using very expensive material but the yield and the application will not be good because they use the material as it is they don't you don't know you have to individualize because without individualizations of your nanoparticle you will not harness the the, the value of the materials it's very very important because the, the nanoscale materials have a higher surface area so for example if you have a titanium the site in macro scale surface area will be 10 or 20 meter square per gram. But if you have titanium dioxide nanoparticles, surface area may be 300 or 400 meter square per gram, then they would aggregate together and they come together by uh, different kind of interactions, the multiple interactions, uh, many, many, many interactions. Uh, so, so it will be aggregated. Okay. Uh, it will be aggregated together. Uh, in this particular case so if you use it you have to make individualizations so some of you will ask me how can i do individualization you have to use ultrasonic we step ultrasonications for some times or you have to use some other different way it depends on the nanomaterial what you have if you have organic nanomaterial or something then you can make some steering or some homogenizations or, but the best method for that is the uh, ultra solutions way or ball milling if you have a solid materials uh, to just make individualizations of the uh, aggregated nanoparticles. <laughs> uh, you see my slide number eight? Yes, sir. So this is carbon quantum dot. We, uh, I told you before. <coughs> Quantum dot is one of the zero dimensional yes, material. Sir. Quantum dot is two types of material. So why why the group would say quantum dot? Quantum dot it means the size of the nanomaterial is less than five nanometers. When you have nanoparticles, the diameter of the size is less than five nanometers. Then we are saying right now about quantum dot. So quantum dot is this is carbon quantum dot. You can prepare by hydrothermal, thermal, whatever methods uh, you can prepare and also have a uh, uh, flow sense uh, some specific uh, propart optical robots actually that people used for many applications and this is one of the uh, dimensions and uh, i want to tell you something very important now i mean uh, when you prepare some nanomaterial generally for bottom up but I, I will i will i will come in details about the senses but i want to show tell you some information is very important when you prepare the nanomaterial, especially from bottom-up techniques, which is a very famous method uh, approach for the synthesis of uh, nanomaterial, and uh, in this case, you can easily uh, control uh, the diameter. You need you need a reducing agent and you need a capping agent. What is the job of all of all of them? A reducing agent is to give electrons to the uh, to the silver ions or to the uh, gold ions, whatever you are using, right? So there's electron transfer from the uh, reducing agent to the met, uh, metal ions 
converting the metal ions to AG0, to nanoclusters, to nanoclusters, okay, to atom, anyway. And this atom will aggregate it, aggregate it, forming nanoclusters. Nanoclaster means the diameter, the diameter, it should be less than one nanometers. Then nanocluster comes together with nanocluster, then preparing nanoparticles. And in the same times, you are putting some cabbing agent, and the cabbing agent will go based on the concentrations, surrounding some nanoparticles, and then you can have a nanoparticles. And if you didn't use, if you didn't use any cabbing agent, you will have metal, but you don't have nanoparticles. You will have a silver silver metal. You will have a gold metal in bigger shape, in micro scale shape. Okay, so you will not have nanomaterials because during the process and the reductions, you convert the iron to atom. Then after that, atoms atoms will forming nanoclusters, and nanoclusters together with nanoclusters will form in nanoparticles. Okay, so uh, when you prepare some uh, uh, quantum dot from zinc oxide, quantum dot uh, carbon. You are designing your procedure to prepare that. It's not you are. I'm doing like this, and by the way, by the chance, I get quantum dot. It's wrong. It's not like that. It's is you are designing. Okay. Hopefully, this is clear, right? And definitely, some people just prepare some. They prepare to have a nanocluster. Means the diameter of the nanoparticle maybe less than one nanometers, or for some specific applications, they need that size. So they use very, very less amount of uh, uh, calving agent or just using green. Initially, when the people start to prepare nanomaterials, maybe 19 until 2005, uh, the people was using reducing agent. It's like sodium bohydride, uh, hydrazine hydrate, uh, as a reducing agent. And sometimes they use surfactant as a calving agent. So they use two different material. But initially, uh, and from 2006 or 8 until uh, 2015, the people was using a polymeric materials as a dual effect, as a capping agent and reducing agent, because a polymer material containing many hydroxide groups, for example, and that have high electron density elements, they, they uh, afford the electron density to reduce the metal ion. And in the meanwhile, it work at the cabin gate, okay? Then recently, starting from 2015 until now, the people, they used some blend extract as a cabin and the reducing agent because polymer also expensive, right? So they start to use uh, as a blend extract, which containing many antioxidant, many flavonoids and so on, and also, afford the same job as a reducing and the cabbing agent, okay? Now, we will go for slide number nine, okay? So uh, this is one dimension, nanomaterials, this kind of material at, at least uh, one dimension uh, in the nanoscale and the other dimensions in is in a micro scale. So this, we have a three kind of material. We have a nano root, because it's also one dimension. We have a nanotube, we have a nanofiber, we have a nanowire. And what the difference between both of them, all of them? Nanotubes means you have uh, materials, the diameter of the, of the material uh, of the, will be in nanoscale, and the length will be in macroscale. But inside there's aluminum or empty aluminum, like carbon nanotubes or halocyte nanotubes. In that aluminum, as you see in the uh, red arrow, that tubes we have, we, we are using some, most of the, that's why most of the people initially, once a carbon nanotube has been discovered, they're using for drug delivery, they're using for gene delivery, then they realize, oh, it's toxic. So they change it with other, some inorganic nanotubes which is biocompatible more than this and some other people they use the nanotubes for as a nano actors for some other applications like catalysis and so on so it depends so that's why it's it's very important uh, nanotubes have been used for different applications and different uh, uh, way 
uh, for this way. And this is just some examples of that. Uh, slide number 10. You, you are seeing slide number 10, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is one dimensional materials. Uh, yes, I will show you. Sir. Yes. What's up? What's the problem? Somebody saying something? No, no, no sir. sir. Okay. So we have a, this is a, 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 a organic, uh, any, any, any things. We have a two, two things, three things, organic and organic hybrid. Means, for example, I we show before it's, uh, uh, inorganic nanotubes is inorganic nano uh, one dimension. We can say inorganic one dimension. This is organic one dimension. This nanofiber, this polyaly nanofiber. You can say it very easier. Uh, the, I will explain later in the course about the different techniques because you have now you're seeing two pictures one is transmission electron microscope, and the other one is the scanning electron microscope. And the, sometimes you have to use this one, and sometimes you have to use this one. So, for my view, for uh, nanofiber, polyaline nanofiber, it's easier to differentiate the dimension of the nanofiber. So, you can use this or this, it doesn't matter. It depends on the availability in your uh, university or something. But you have to both, both of them because the diameter of the nanofiber in this case is one is 50 nanometers. So, you have to exactly use it to exactly detect. So the, the, the diameter of the nanofibers so what you are using and when we use uh, and the, the other issue is uh, nanowire nanowire is very very thin the diameter may be five nanometers to ten nanometers it's very very small and you can use like silver nanowire which the people using as a transparent conductive layers for textile for other for many applications actually we will not talk about the application right now but silver nanowire mainly used for electronic applications because nowadays that some people they want to use flexible solar cell so they use some textile material or they use some other material and they could with some conductive layers and uh, they, it's very hard to use a conductive sheet but they use a conductive nanowire they, and, and put as a as a layers uh, so this area is very interesting and hot by now uh, we will go to slide number 11. So two dimensional nanomaterial and the very famous, very, I told you before, there's the big difference between 2D material and 2D nanomaterial. Two, there the, some material is 2D material, which is, an, is not nano actually. And there's some material is 2D nanomaterials. So two dimension nanomaterials in this case, like graphene, which is the thickness and the width is in nanoscale. And uh, this material, uh, like uh, plate like structures, uh, there's graphene, there's uh, clay layers, silicate layers. All of this is, uh, you can say, 2D uh, nanomaterials, two dimension nanomaterials. Uh, one also of the other examples of 3D nanomaterial, like 2D MOF nanosheet. You know, uh, I think most of you, they know about the metal organic framework. Maybe some of you have been used. Maybe some of you have been here with some lectures. Maybe some of you, of you have read some articles about uh, metal organic framework. Maybe some of you already have been involved in the studying of some specific uh, characteristic for that material. So metal organic framework is some special characteristic materials of material. Of, of, Generally, it can be prepared in 3D or it can be prepared in 2D, but it's containing some porous structure, and mainly that porous structure is um, in nanoscale, so you can say nanoporous material or whatever, but anyway, so 2D material is uh, two things, linker and the metal ion, so the linker and metal complex together, forming some uh, crystalline materials. And uh, one of this material is prepared in nanoscale, and one of this material can be built in nano sheet. Uh, so this is the example of nano sheet. You can see in the, in the, in the picture number A. 
uh, it's like a book so it's like it's uh, similar to the magazine you know you know so this is uh, we can say two-dimensional material or hybrid two-dimensional material because it's uh, the, the metal iron is on top and the, in between the metal iron metal iron is a linker tefsalic acid whatever is used uh, then again we have a nano coating and nano coating like gold nanofilm you can see in the uh, TM image uh, uh, down so it's you know if you just investigate much more it's gold nanoparticles a spherical uh, size but if you just see it's it's very clear uh, that is a gold nano nanofilm the people just using for catalysis applications and for other also other some other applications also uh, finally in this category we have a, a three dimensional nanomaterials and this is half three dimension uh, larger than three the three one of the three dimension the size is uh, below 100 nanometers the size uh, so there's a mini materials but using like uh, 3d helical uh, gold zinc oxide nanostructures um, you know bundles of nanofibers and composites multi-layer type structures but the problem is that we are not it's not familiar in the use because it needs some specific conditions to produce such kind of material and if not uh, needed to do this one it's easy because uh, you know we are working in the research to develop something to be utilized in the industry right so one of the goal of the research and one of the goal of r d in many company and if this company doesn't have r d and uh, they depend on the scientists and the discovery in the science in, and they consider that that university is the own r d and they always watch up about the applications have been uh, released actually is to make the material cost effective means if you are preparing one material one nanomaterial in multi-step preparation and even the material is very very interesting very very interesting and for example is giving conductivity for example 100 siemens meter square so, so, uh, siemens per centimeter and some other material conductive material have been prepared by one put method and uh, it's very cost effective compared to the other one and the conductivity is 50 Siemens per centimeter and I need that one it's 50 is fine for me this one is much cheaper for the industry because industry is dealing by the cost so if this one pop material will will cost me one dollars and the other one will give much higher effect but it will cost me me ten dollars then I will go for one dollars okay uh, definitely so <laughs> so uh, that's why I'm saying most of the people like if there's 1,000, 1 million article published monthly for nanoscale material, you will see more than 95% is deals with 0, 1, 2D nanomaterial, and maybe 5% is 3D nanomaterial. So the other classification, now I'm going for slide number 14. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. So there is another classification of the nanomaterial, which is called material type. What does the mean of that? You have a carbon-based nanomaterial. Me now, now I'm, I forgot about dimension. I am now focusing about the classifications of nanomaterial based on the materials. What I have, because some other application they need thermally stable material, right? Some other application don't know, doesn't care. Some other applications they need some inorganic nanomaterial because the temperature will be more than 200 or 300 right so organic doesn't work or, or anyway so we have a carbon based nanomaterials we have inorganic based nanomaterials we have organic based nanomaterial we have a hybrid based nanomaterial hybrid means organic and inorganic together so carbon based nanomaterials slide number 15 okay so for carbon-based nano uh, nanomaterials, there's a you know uh, the carbon is very famous element in the world and the, in the earth actually, and there's uh, many carbon allotropes. 
uh, you can say carbon allotropes. So the carbon based on material can be holy tubes, uh, spheres, carbon nanofiber, fluorine, nanodiamond, uh, graphene, uh, definitely carbon nanotubes, uh, carbon nanoparticles, quantum dot. There are the many examples of uh, carbon based material. And the one also, also, one of the important things, if you consider one million paper released per month worldwide about the nanomaterials, so carbon based material only, it will be at least from 30 to 40 percent. Because it's cheaper, uh, many applications uh, from other people use, especially graphene and the graphene decreased something, blah, blah, blah. So it's it's uh, uh, very easier to prepare. Uh, it's very uh, stable, uh, thermally stable, uh, physically and chemically stable, uh, environmentally stable, uh, cost effective. So right now, the people preparing the, the graphene from the waste agriculture, so from the food chill. Uh, it's easier actually, it's not uh, difficult uh, to prepare. And th there's some other material uh, like fluorine, and this fluorine is, is very famous in the organic solar cell. And uh, there's three types of fluorine actually based on the diameter. Some or diameter is 8.2, some is a little bit more, uh, like 36. Uh, so uh, this is, you know, and you can see C60, C70, C80, it depends on how many carbon L, uh, atoms in the uh, following cycle. A graphene, you know, graphene, this is carbon containing network, uh, the arrangement of carbon atom was a rigid hexagonal pattern in the graphene network makes two dimension planar surface. The thickness of the uh, one sheet of graphene or one single layer is actually uh, mainly theoretically from 0.3 to 1 nanometer, theoretically. But actually it's from 100 to 200, 1 to 2 nanometers. The thickness of the single layer graphene sheet Theoretically, from 0.3 to 1 nanometer. But in Excuse me, sir. What? We have left with five minutes only in the meeting. Okay, okay. I will try to finish. So we'll, yeah, we will join it again. Okay. After will, five minutes. I will try to finish in five minutes. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, so uh, this is, you know, uh, ah, the graphene. The graphene, the thickness of the single layer graphene sheet from 0.3 to 1 nanometer. This is the uh, theoretical, but in reality from 1 to 2 nanometers, okay? We have a carbon nanotubes, and I already talked about carbon nanotubes, so I don't need to talk more about carbon nanotubes. And this is the carbon nanofiber. Actually, carbon nanofiber is easier to prepare. It's similar, like if you have a polyaline nanofiber and you carbonize under net atmosphere, then you will get carbon nanofiber. It's very easier. Uh, uh, fine. Uh, the second issue is inorganic based nanomaterials. Inorganic based, we already talked about zinc oxide nanoparticles, titanium dioxide nanoparticles, silver nanoparticles, nickel oxide nanoparticles. It's always the semiconductor materials also. Of ceramic materials, uh, silicon dioxide nanoparticles. So I think most of you, you, you have been used uh, this kind of material, so it's not new for you. Uh, and this is organic uh, nano uh, material, organic based nanomaterial like casein nanoparticles, ketodan nanoparticles, polyvinyl balladine nanoparticles, polypyrrole nanoparticles. Actually, organic based nanomaterial hint means here, nanoparticle, nanofiber, uh, uh, organic nanotubes, it's all the dimension. Now we are talking about material based, okay? This is very, very important. Uh, this is hybrid, uh, uh, hybrid nanomaterials actually, uh, and I give you examples is uh, 2D uh, metal organic framework nanosheets, uh, dimension is around four nanometers, the sheet is four nanometers the thickness, and this is very famous material. And also hybrid nano, hybrid based nanomaterial, it could be nanocomposite actually, 
because when you have a nanocomposite and you have a, 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 a the core is inorganic and the uh, the shell is organic we call also uh, hybrid based nanomaterials so uh, so hybrid based material is you can say even itself like metal organic framework is a fit example but the other nanocomposite you are preparing is also called hybrid based nanomaterials a different shape also this like this is like this shape this is you know halocyte nanotubes and covered by polyalanine uh, uh, layers so uh, it's called uh, hybrid based nanomaterial or it's called nanocomposite materials because we have a core is inorganic and the shell is organic and now i finish uh, the first uh, lectures today so uh, if anybody have some questions please try to give me to answer you and just uh, lift two minutes yes sir dear participants you can ask only one question kindly or we can uh, take your queries tomorrow sir what suits you okay is this is not the case i would like to thank all of you and have a good day and uh, enjoy your day and uh, assalamu alaikum thank you sir